In conversation with Parker James, born in Texas, raised in Michigan, and wishes it was somewhere warmer, Parker James is a nerd in all things such as D&D, MTG, and 40K. He loves both science fiction and fantasy and wanted to make some of his own. And on today's episode of Auto Interview, it's my utmost pleasure and excitement to have on the show today, Parker James. How are you doing, Parker? Welcome on the show. I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm doing very fine. Too. It's a lovely evening here in Nigeria, and I say it's a bright afternoon in your world. I can see, right? Oh, yeah. It's a nice sunny day here, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Time travel. It's so nice to have you on the show today. <laughs> nice to be here. Yeah. So, Parker, you know, I would love to tell us about... You know, your short story book titled Fiction Foremost, which is a compilation of short story. I'd love to ask mm -hmm. you, how does this book come about? What inspired you to write Fiction Foremost? And also, how did you come about with the title name? Because I kind of I find it to be quite unusual. So uh, with Fiction Foremost, uh, it was actually when I was in college, I was uh, doing a lot of like, you know, writing assignments or writing oh. uh, samples for applying for many different writing positions. Oh. And I had like a bunch of these sort of collected up and uh, like built up that I really enjoyed. And I thought it's kind of a shame to just kind of keep them in my folder. Uh, so I went through like all of my favorites and polished them up to meet the writing standards I have now uh, compared to back then yeah. and uh, made uh, the short story collection. Whoa. And uh, as, as for the title, Fiction Foremost, uh, I was kind of inspired by those like old penny dreadful, uh, like like uh, old book stuff like that, like the tales to inspire uh, and stuff like that. And I love genre fiction, like you know science fiction, fantasy, and all that stuff. So you know, fiction foremost. Just mm -hmm. I love genre fiction. Wanted to make this book like short story collection, just genre fiction. Oh, that's actually amazing! Really, I love the description of it. Really, and the cover actually looks great. We have a nice yep. background in it there. Yep, yeah, uh, my. Can uh, bring it close to the camera so you can see what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, nice cover, really. There's this sort of animation I'm seeing in there. Are they like characters mm -hmm. in the story? Yep. Uh, each one is uh, like a little fragment from uh, each uh, short story. Oh. Um, so like this one is from the Fearic Victory, Close Game, um, Perpetual Pictures, Harry Hawthorne. Uh, and these two are from my main series the star of ash series oh, uh, yeah. both are kind of prequels to my main book here interesting yeah <laughs> i love the connection between the two sounds quite lovely really thanks for sharing yeah. and thanks for letting us know now you yeah, also have you. another book in the name of a star of hash which you've just shot to the camera a shite magic yeah, and for readers yeah. who haven't read it yet and of course without giving much information away could we have a sneak of what we'd expect in terms of themes picking up a star of hash? Yep. So in terms of oh, themes, uh, this is uh, very much a kind of coming of age story for the main oh. protagonist, Freya. Um, it deals with trauma and generational trauma, deals with kind of losing your innocence uh, and just sort of uh, themes of like post-war changes, just sort of like, how a world handles like the effects of like such a massive war that takes place before the book and mm -hmm. people kind of recovering from that and handling from the traumas and horrors that happen from there. Mm. Wow. That's quite amazing. Really? I love your take on that. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thanks for sharing. Thank you. And now, you know, I've always been fascinated, but our writers, especially novelists like yourself, craft long sentences and bring words together in a way that it eventually makes a great novel. And this always leaves me thinking about exactly they got the ideas and inspiration to put this words together in a way that an eventual lovely book is formed. And as far as writing is concerned, I'd love to ask you too, Parker, how do you get your inspirations and ideas? Where do they come from? I'm just curious. So uh, I've always loved... Uh learning about history, mythology, oh. and just kind of religions from around the world. Uh, and kind of just seeing how every sort of piece kind of connects and links to the other, like how we get from this event 
that would be a domino and a long chain to reach these events. Uh, and because of that, I've been loving like fantasy and science fiction has a lot of world building where something from way back when would be like something that would seem small and then would cascade into some larger mm-hmm. events that would have uh, long lasting consequences for the story. And uh, with all the mythology and religions kind of mixed in, you could see how both the mythology and religions would affect the peoples of that time and vice versa, how the people of the time would affect them. Uh, you could see like Greek mythology is a easy example. You can see how their mythology mm-hmm. changes from the culture and events that would occur through their time with like Aphrodite originally starting to be a war goddess. And then as Athens uh, was becoming a more prominent nation and wanting to less associate Aphrodite being a war goddess since Athens had a misogynistic history, they tried to convert her more to a love and lust goddess. Mm. And you kind of see for the progression of that, how both the culture of Athens changed and how the mythology of uh, Aphrodite changed. Oh, wow. That's quite amazing to know. That's quite lovely to know. I love the fact that you mentioned all of these things and, you know, letting us know how it's been incorporated into your book and how it formed inspirations mm-hmm. for you. The picture of a star of ash again to the camera. Mm-hmm. I particularly love what I'm seeing in here. It looks like a cartoon in there, the lady and the guy, or I'm not sure if it's mm-hmm. a guy. Are they like characters? Yeah, I'd like to uh... talk a bit about them too. Yep. Uh, so over here is Freya. She is the main character. She's oh. about 10 years old. Uh, oh. And she's like, kind of, you know, riding on the back of her father, uh, Cal here. Uh, he is a veteran of the Second Grand Crusade in my uh, story. And both of them have magical abilities that they have to keep hidden oh. uh, due to the post-war uh, world that they that her father like fought in creating a system that does not like despite him fighting for the side the system did not help him in the end he was sort of a disenfranchised uh veteran because of that war mm-hmm. and so they try to hide who they are but also try to not be afraid of themselves as well mm. that's good amazing really I, I love your answers to these questions they really do make for an interesting discussion i'm glad to hear that yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. And I love the sound of your book. And please, now, this is coming to my mind. Could you tell us a bit about the genre these books are classified under? Uh, yes, so this would be kind of like young adult fantasy. Um, I would say this is probably kind of middle grade age, like between like 10, 18 year olds or so. Uh, yeah. My fiction foremost, I would say, is a bit more of a... Uh, bit of an older audience, like maybe more closer to like 13 to 14 to 18. Oh, um, interesting. But yeah, a uh, bit of warning though for people, like if a younger audience does read this, this does cover some very dark mm. themes and I don't, I try to make sure not to like hide it, but also still make it palatable. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind if you're a parent or if you're a young person yourself uh, reading that, that like mm. what it can entail inside there. Oh, that's beautiful. That's amazing. Thank you so much for letting us know. Thank you. And now, could you tell us a bit about your characterization? Is there a particular character do you like or hate in your novel? And I know that this is a very tricky one for writers to answer, knowing that, you know, the creator does characters themselves. But I would like to to know your take on this. Do you, have, do you have a favorite character and one you don't seem to like that much in your both books? So I would say, I I think I would say Cal is probably my favorite character just because of all the trauma that he went through. And oh. despite all that, he tries his best to not like inflict that trauma on other people, just trying mm. to live a quiet, peaceful life. Uh, I also enjoy just sort of like how he like handles with other people. His interactions are always... Uh, fascinating since he has a very difficult time trusting people that aren't like his very very short small circle of like friends that he's like been with and he his handling of his trauma is not very like healthy as he tries to go for avoidance rather than acceptance to the point Mm. of 
repressing a lot of his memories uh, that unfortunately for Freya, we, she can end up accidentally uh, triggering when, because uh, he doesn't really know what is the cause of it because he's repressed it. She doesn't know what is causing it because he's not really able to explain it to her. Mm. Uh, wow. This is such an a, amazing. This is, a, this is such an amazing discussion into the making of your book, into the making of the entire story. And I really love your take on this. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, to answer for the least favorite character, I would say, you know, if they existed as a person, I would say uh, Ronan Gallagher's dad, uh, Fallon Gallagher, he is a person who, like, not a very good person, uh, but he <laughs> was on the sort of winning side of the war. So despite, like, like bad guys. Well, he's not a he's not the antagonist, but he's sort of just like he's a person who um Nazi. Mm, kinda. It's more of, he is definitely uh bigoted. Um, but he his big issue is like he participate in the war, but he doesn't he wasn't the big hero that he tries to make everyone else oh, believe. Okay, interesting. Sort of a a bit of stolen valor uh, in that sense. And he like kind of brainwashed his own son, Ronan, who is one of the more prominent characters there into kind of like thinking like, Oh, his dad really is this big hero. In actuality, he was just doing atrocities during that war. Yeah. You know, and the I, only I reason think, he's still. Absolutely. You know, I think it's actually a very fun question to ask authors, you know, what's your favorite character? Which, 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 mm -hmm. which one do you love most? Which do you hate? Knowing the fact that they created those characters by themselves, you know, it's always fun to hear them talk about the ones they love, the ones they, you know, have mixed feelings for, the ones they hate. And I, and I can say that my own writing. I'm like, oh, I hate this character. I don't know why. It was one of two reasons, yeah. But then this is the one I love the most because of what they've been through. And I, I love the fact that you're able to relate to the guy who has been through a lot of you know, trauma, a lot of crazy things, a lot of art issues. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for mentioning. I love hearing you talk about that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Now, apart from a star of harsh and fiction foremost, do you have another works you've authored or say currently working on? Uh, yes. So I'm currently working on the sequel to The A Child of Magic. Uh, the next book is going to be called A Star of Ash, A Child of Faith. And you actually kind of, at the end of this book, get to see a little sneak preview of that one. Oh. Wow, that's great. And I'm I hope that to... goes, yeah, I hope that goes unsuccessfully. Hopefully when mm -hmm. that is up, we'd love to have you back on the show to talk about it. That'll be fun, really. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd absolutely love to be here again. Yeah. Now, could you tell us what publishing is like for a published author like yourself? Are there any challenges you've encountered? in the process of putting your book together, in the process of writing it, and also ever since it got published? Uh, yes, so I went through the self-publishing route. Uh, I really wanted to kind of uh, keep my creative vision for my story intact as much as I could, uh, since I know this isn't going to be a particularly you know, mainstream popular book, but I really want to be in my niche and sort of stick to that niche. Um, so I'd say some of the challenges would be understanding the format requirements for things like Amazon's KDP publishing and Ingram yeah, Spark, especially. Absolutely. Uh, you want to really make sure that you check through before you publish, because when you publish on there, it can be a bit of time before you can correct it uh, on mm -hmm. their websites. Uh, Ingram Spark, uh, I would say it definitely has an issue of not being super clear with their instructions on there mm -hmm. uh, and how they want you to format it. Um, I would recommend to any new authors publishing on there to be sure to maybe watch some videos, especially if they're up to date, because a lot of the websites change how they operate over time mm -hmm. uh, about like the process for there. Uh, I also highly recommend uh, after, so my order of like, publishing things I'd recommend would be Amazon through KDP, then draft to digital. That's a fantastic one. Like 
once you have your Amazon KDP system set up, you yeah. can then go to Draft It Digital, and then when you publish on there, it will automatically publish on various other uh, book Platform. outlets such as uh, yeah. Barnes and Noble's website, uh, Apple Books website. Uh, it'll do. It'll save you a lot of time there. You'll want to go on Ingram though, if you want to, at least in America, um, if you want to be having your books in libraries. Uh, yeah. From what I've been uh, told. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I love your take on that. And I love your deep explanation, at least get into it. It's going to help some people who are watching, who want to go into publishing a bit. So I have an idea of how these things works. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Yeah. Now let's talk about criticism. I love to hear your take on criticism. How do you do negative? Let's speak of more negative reviews. Yeah. I'm not sure if you've okay. had one in the past, but then how do you undo criticism as a writer? Would you like to talk about that? Uh, yeah. So I think of criticism as definitely a means to learn, especially if you hear uh, a lot of similar criticism from multiple sources. Uh, I always try to have as many people before I publish, like be willing to read through it as much as I can, get their feedback and try to see if I can incorporate around their feedback while still maintaining my vision of the story. Um, mm. So it could be like how a character might say a phrase. Uh, I might try to rewrite it while them getting the point across of that phrase, but still write it in a way that the, like my beta reader would uh, like say it is an improvement. Uh, mm. Definitely had to like more condense how my story was initially from like the first draft. Uh, mm -hmm. As I often want to, like, I had the bad habit of wanting to explain everything that went on, even stuff that for the reader wouldn't really, like, they wouldn't really care about because there wasn't much context. So you have to learn to be willing to cut down your story, even as, like, though you love to just explain everything. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing, don't let criticism of your work, like, bring you down. Obviously, you want to learn from it but don't let it be the end of it like even if you have like a bunch of criticism early on that just Absolutely. means that you can have a lot of room to grow mm. well i love your take on this actually thank you so much for mentioning and you know sharing more light on how you take this because i know that you know especially as, as as a new font writer especially as someone who is new into the writing industry criticism can be a very hard thing to take to pull in yeah mm -hmm. and sometimes it can demean it our value or our understanding as a writer. Sometimes it could make us to feel less of ourselves, especially when you get a bad one, the negative one, in an unconstructive manner. Yeah. But then if mm -hmm. if if it comes in a constructive way, constructively, it could be a bit, yeah, say, okay, I'm I'm gonna work in this aspect. I'm gonna shake a bit on this. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. Yeah. Things like that. I, I enjoy hearing your take about this. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now, is there anything that you'd love to show the viewers about your book that we did not mention in this interview and you'd love the viewers to know particularly? Is there anything? Um. Well, so I have my own YouTube channel called PDJ's Publishing LLC Interesting. that I've been posting trailers and lore videos for my series here. Uh, I'm nearly finished with my most recent one that I hope to get published within this or like out on YouTube within uh, this week, uh, if not next week. Um, wow. So if anyone or like if people you know can support it, watch that, and I'll try to make more as I'm continuing to write the series. That's great, and I'm gonna attach I'm gonna attach your YouTube channel link in the description part of this interview, just so some viewers who want to check it up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to add okay. it afterward. Yeah, and now it's a pop to Parker. What sort of advice do you have for other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book in your particular genre? What would you advise people in this category? Um, so I would say if you are writing for, like, you want to appeal to as many people as possible, traditional publishing would be yeah. probably the best way to go about it as they will help you with marketing your book to reach, like, as many people and also try to help you make it more in line with a lot of the other popular uh, stories in that genre. Yeah. Um, if you're trying to find your own niche, which uh, I feel 
like is a good way to help you really stand out, then I would recommend self-publishing, but be sure to like, you know, make sure you have beta readers, make sure you have editors, um, both like plot editors and uh, grammar editors uh, as even though like, you know, I want to maintain my vision, I still want to make sure that it's as high quality as I can potentially make my story. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are plenty of uh, like, I definitely make sure to look through uh, the various websites and like forums and stuff like that to find various groups that can help you with that. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's all I can think of at the top of my head at the moment. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Thank you so much for adding that. Actually. Thank you so much for your advice. And I'm hoping that viewers, including myself would love to utilize it. And now, Parker, just in case you have some viewers who are currently watching this interview, I would love to get a copy of any of your books. On what platform are they available on for Porsches? Uh, yep, uh, you can get it on Amazon, uh, like just both hardcover, softcover, digital. You get it on the Apple Bookstore, Barnes & Nobles, mm-hmm. uh, anywhere. Like If you ever look up Draft Digital, pretty much anywhere that they sell books on, my book will be on there. I yeah. uh, currently have... Uh, my book in the uh, Michigan Public Libraries. Um, ah, yeah. So trying to get that spread around as much as I can as well through there. That's great. That's great. And I left a link in the discussion part of this interview where interested viewers can get a copy of Parker James' books directly on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, on his website, and also another platform where it's available on for Porsche's. I also left a link to his social media pages for possible followings and also to his YouTube channel as well. So thank you so much, Parker, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's awesome. And I must say it's really awesome and even more than awesome, actually, having this conversation with you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was awesome having this conversation with you too. Absolutely. It's my pleasure as well. (laughs) 